attack. It's the Home Depot SEC on CBS. 18th ranked Georgia Tech and 13th ranked Georgia. The hometown Georgia Bulldogs. Emotions running very high. Mark Rick in the middle of that Georgia huddle. And then moments ago, both teams face off at midfield. It's the fight for bragging rights in the state of Georgia. Well, today's weather, it rained all night. It's been off and on all afternoon. 51 degrees of game time. And the forecast, light showers. The Bulldogs have won seven straight games in this series that dates way back to 1893. Tech is 11-25-1 all time at Stanford Stadium. And this game is being brought to you in crystal clear CBS High Definition. Georgia Tech beat Miami Tread last week, ran for 472 yards against the Canes. And how about Georgia? They're fresh off a of bye week, and they do hope that extra week of practice will help slow down Tech's triple option. You're absolutely right, Craig. You know, talking to Georgia coaches, they really felt like that open date could not have come at a better time. This is a team that had four straight essential road games, a weary team. And so that off week certainly came at the right time. Georgia Tech won the toss. They chose the first if Georgia will have the opening kick. And it's Samuel taken right at the one yard line. At the 25 of the same it's a tackle and stumbles to the 33 yard line. <laughs> well, the starting quarterback for Georgia, Matthew Stafford, the junior out of Dallas, Texas. 26 and 6 as a starter for Georgia. And that completion percentage very impressive at 61%. So Stafford and company will start this drive at their 33 yard line. First and 10, 9 and 2 on the season, 6 and 2 in the SEC. Stafford, shotgun, hands off, Marino. The leading rusher in the SEC pounds his way for 12 to the 47 yard line. Cooper Taylor, the free safety with the stop. Time now for our starting lineups brought to you by Coke Zero. And Georgia's front line's been hit hard by injury. Two freshmen protect Stafford, Glenn, and Jones. And there is a big talent. You just saw him. No Sean Marino has rushed over 1,200 yards, 15 touchdowns. And a pickup of 13. First down and 10 for Georgia. Play action pass. A little quick hit. It's a massive play. Down the sideline. Back to the ground. Gone on the energy to start this game. Defensively for Georgia Tech, it's anchored by the front four, no question. And the two ends, Morgan and Johnson, have combined for 12 and a half sacks. Linebackers, they've been hit by injury. The freshman, Kyle Jackson, plays inside and out. And Morgan Burnett leads the secondary with six interceptions. So two offensive plays and games of 13 and 14 for Georgia. From the shotgun, Stafford sets up, pops, pulls it down, looking, looking, throws, and it's incomplete. And let's take a look now at Albert Engel. And over Georgia offensively, Craig, you got to make Tech bring five or six. That time they brought the extra blitzer, the whole key for this offense. If they can only rush four, be difficult for Stafford all day. And then on Georgia Tech's defense, the other side, it's all about Marino. We just saw it the last play, Craig. He brings the energy to that team. Tech has to do a good job on 24. Massaqua and Moore, the two wide receivers set to the top of your screen. Head off, first man through. Doesn't need much. Marino. No Sean Marino, the redshirt sophomore out of Belford, New Jersey. And Trev, 13 career games of over 100 yards. Uh, he's, again, the guy who brings the energy to this offense. He has that rare combination of speed and also the toughness to break tackles. The first play of the game, we saw it broke a tackle. Anthony Barnes had a great shot in the open field. Be interesting today to see if Georgia Tech can tackle No. Sean Moreno with that first tackle. Now the third and first down of this series. Two carries, 23 yards for Moreno. Here in the opening drive, the Stafford comes back first. Inside the five-yard line, and what a grab by the freshman, A.J. Green. First and goal, Georgia.
Georgia. Well, this is the freshman. This is A.J. Green. He's going to just get inside that time. The defender, a terrific route as Stafford throws a strike between the safety and that corner out there on the left side for Georgia Tech. And a pickup of 28 yards. Mario Bubber, the corner, brought him down. A.J. Green with his 52nd grab of the season. And the Bulldogs are knocking on the front porch. First and goal. Marino stopped up. Made the move on to the two-yard line. Oh, second effort. Todd wants touchdown, and the officials room him down at the one-yard line. Marino moved in. What an impressive start by Georgia. Senior day, this crowd has not taken a seat, Trev, and it's against your arch rival, Georgia Tech. And give credit to Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator, came out in four wide receiver sets, took some shots down the field, and so far, Matthew Stafford has delivered. Bulldogs stop the backfield, up and over, no. Oh, great stand, the Yellow Jackets take Marino, a point on Marino. game. Morgan was there. Brad Jefferson, the inside Tank linebacker, was left by number 51. Brad Jefferson, yeah, Brad Jefferson just does a great job as Marino tries to go up over the top. You get some penetration in the backfield that time by Derek Morgan, number 93. The defensive end gets a little bit underneath, and there's 51. Brad Jefferson cleaning up over the top. And those hits have forced 27 turnovers for Georgia Tech. That's ninth in the NCAA. They come and they will hit you one more time. Stafford on the rollout. To the inside, touchdown, Bulldogs! And it's Trent Chandler, the senior, injured most of the season, down for the play today, but he answered the bell. What a great play by Ch Trent Chandler. You know, this offense, it's all built on the play action. When you can run the football, you play actual play action fake there, and a nice job by Matthew Stafford finding Chandler in the back of the end zone. He beat Morgan Burnett, the rover, what a drive for Georgia's effort. Lowell Walsh with the extra point. First touchdown reception of the season for Trip Chandler. What a talent. Injured throughout the season. Oh, that must feel good. What a great job again. Play action pass. Staying in there. The boys delivering to Trip Chandler. Beating Morgan Burnett. And George is up 7 to nothing. Now the senior Trip Chandler puts Georgia on top by seven, eight plays, 66 yards, just over three minutes off the clock. What an impressive start by Georgia. Between the hedges here in Athens. A player wall set to kick. And back to return is Burnett and right. And there's Oga. Uga seven, and he tips the scales, by the way, Trev. He's about your size, 56 and a half pounds. He's got a tough act to follow. Uga six, of course, the all-time winner for the Uggas. Short kick. And that ball was out of bounds. Was it touched? Looked like a short hop at the 20, and it's out of bounds at the 25. Kick off by out of bounds. Free kick out of bounds against the kicking team. The ball being put in play at the 40-yard line. First down. It's a great field position for Georgia Tech as we look at the quarterback, and it's Josh Nesbitt. He'll pull the trigger on this triple option. Rushy for over 600 yards, and he will trick you once in a while, Trent, and will throw the football. They'll take some shots last Thursday night. Three straight passes to open the game. You don't want to give this offense this sort of field position. Wally Jones in motion. Nesbitt out of the pocket, wants a throw, fires, caught, fell to sideline, and on the run. Demarius Thomas, 36 catches as a quarterback target. As we look at the offensive line of Georgia Tech, and it really has bought into Paul Johnson's offense. Dan Voss is the man in the middle. And that Tech backfield, it's all about Jonathan Dwyer. Leads the ACC in rushing over 107 yards a ball game. There's Paul Johnson in his first year after six seasons with the midshipman of Navy. A pickup of 19 on a Tech's first offensive play. Flags are down. Nesbitt is covered up in a hurry at the line of scrubber. 
Phillips at the 41. Well, the flag is back at the 46-yard line. And the referee today is Tom Zamorski. Illegal shift against the offense. Five-yard penalty for previous spot. First down. Well, the Bulldogs are pointing at the Yellow Jackets. Georgia defensively. Geno Atkins anchors that front four. 27 quarterback hurries yet. Does not have a sack. Linebackers will run you down. Rennie Curran leads his team with 98 tackles and the free safety. Rashad Jones leads the secondary with three interceptions. Well, it's first and 15 after the penalty. And up the middle, a gain of three by Dwyer. Let's go back to the first time today at college. Hey, Tim, I guarantee you there will be scoreboard watching here in, uh, in Athens, Georgia. Little pitch out, far side, Roddy Jones, a little lane. Inside the 35 to the 34-yard line. And let's go back and check out Albert's angle. You know, for Georgia Tech offensively, Craig, you're going to have to take some shots. We've already seen it. They took a shot to Demarius Thomas. 36 catches on the year. He's a real key. He'll be getting some man-to-man -man matchups on the outside. Then Georgia's defense. Well, you better wrap up. They've had some troubles tackling throughout the course of this year. And Jonathan DeWire, it'll be three yards, three yards. If you're not careful, 35. So how well does Georgia tackle? We'll go a long way to determine if they win this game. Nesbitt. On the move, Tech at the Georgia 34 yard line, flag down. And Dwyer took the handoff, maybe a yard, but a flag quickly tossed in the Tech backfield. Illegal shift against the offense. The penalties decline. Fourth down. Well, stepping up the offense, you look at the Tech. Uh, offense Trev 20 plays or 20 yard plays 60 on the season yeah I think there's a perception out there that if you run the triple option the triple spread option whatever you want to call it that you can't make big plays and obviously Paul Johnson would point to that graphic right there and say some of the biggest plays in the history of Georgia Tech have been made for this triple option offense that Tech backs 500 on fourth down tries 9 of 18 this season as Nesbitt sets up throws man coverage in the top Overthrows Corey Earls. And so Tech will give the ball back to Georgia on downs. How about that? You surprised Paul Johnson goes for six? Not really. You're kind of in no man's land there. You understand it's a rival game. You've got to re on and respond to what Georgia did. You got the man-to-man -man matchup on the outside. Just overthrew Corey Earls. Timeout in Athens. The Bulldogs between the hedges up by seven. Well, in the booth and staying dry is Georgia offensive coordinator Mike Bobo. And Bobo is the subject of our SEC moment presented by Sonic. Bobo going to take it and look and throw it in the corner. And a touchdown! Oh, my God! A touchdown in the corner! My God! In the corner! Oh, my! It couldn't have happened! Now Bobo directed Georgia over Georgia Tech, 27-24, and Trev was uh, the quarterback of the Bulldogs from 93 through 97, and is now in his second year as Georgia's offensive coordinator. And actually, uh, a lot of people know that in 1997, 65% completion, that's number one in Georgia history for completion percentage during a season. Mike Bobo, an outstanding quarterback. Bulldogs got this drive at the 33-yard line. Stafford rolls out of the pocket, goes over the net. coverage in the secondary. Well, they're seeing something in this Tech secondary that they like. As you see, Stafford buys himself a little extra time, sets up, and there is Kenneth Harris. Beats inside the safety, Morgan Burnett. And I think you're right, Craig, a busted coverage for Georgia Tech's defense. But how about Mike Bobo, this offense, opening it up and taking some chances down the field. And, of course, Stafford completing. A gain of 31, first and 10, Georgia. <laughs> All right, thank you, Timmy. Miami's trying to recover after watching Georgia Tech run off nearly 500 rushing yards against them nine days ago. And on second down, let's call it eight, Stafford shotgun. 
and whistles will stop play. So we've seen several flags here early. Before the snap, ball starts, 78 of the offense, five-yard penalty, second down. So the whistle on the right tackle, Josh Davis. You know, Craig, I think what can happen to you as a defense, you know, Dave Walmuck's the defensive coordinator at Tech, and you're so concerned about Marino sort of taking over the game from an energy standpoint that you get guys up around the line of scrimmage, the safeties peaking in the backfield, and so far here early in the first quarter, again, taking shots down the field, and these Georgia wide receivers are getting open against that Tech secondary. Mike Bobo, that offensive coordinator, now spreading the field with four wide receivers. Shotgun, Stafford steps up and throws a dart. And it's incomplete. Massaqua, the intended the intended receiver. Well, that first drive was so impressive for Georgia and Matthew Stafford. And initially here, it's just the inside handoff to Marino. Great vision, makes the first guy miss. Sort of started it out, and there Stafford then goes down the field, finds the open receiver in green, culminates down here in the end zone with a one-yard touchdown to Trip Chandler, the senior tied end on senior day. An impressive first drive for the Georgia Bulldogs. Stafford, 26 and 6 as the Bulldog starter. Two weeks ago, through for 215 yards and a touchdown against Auburn. He'll hand it off. Moreno breaks one tackle, then is flipped and dropped at the 33. Kyle Jackson, impressive redshirt freshman with the stop, the inside linebacker. Well, Chris Davis, the right guard, big number 63, is going to get out in front of Marino this time. Doesn't get a, a great block, but you can just see the explosive ability of no Sean Marino as he gets out into that hole. And George is setting up here to go for it on fourth down. Fourth and seven at the Tech 33 yard line. And on the season, Mark Rick and company, five of 10. So they're batting 500 on fourth down tries. Ford wide receiver set. Shotgun Stafford. Three step drop. Pulls it down. And Stafford is still on his feet and will take his seat at the 40 yard line. The Tech's front four, Trev, finally found their way to Matthew Stafford. That's a good job of that front four. They only come with four that time. And what you're going to see is Stafford, he feels the pressure from the outside from Morgan, has to step up again. And there's number 94, Aris Anyabi, who has stepped in and done an outstanding job spelling Vance Walker all season. Back in Athens, Georgia, 6.33 to play in this opening quarter, and the Bulldogs lead by seven. They're playing the Christmas music already, though, so that means I got to get out there. Well, Georgia with 13 plays, they gained nearly 100 yards, and Tech is back at it, down by seven. Other center goes Josh Nesbitt. And it's Dwyer off the right side, behind the right tackle of Barrick, and the guard Gilbert. And so far, we have not seen Dwyer break one here early. That's a pickup of three. And Trev, this is rivalry weekend, and what else would you expect? Allen uh, having a little tussle with Thomas? Well, I'm sure that these Georgia coaches, William Martinez, the defensive coordinator, challenged his corner. He's going to play a lot of man coverage all afternoon. Pitch out, tough catch. Roddy Jones turns the corner. And has knocked out of bounds near the 45-yard line. Rashad Jones gave him a Georgia Bulldog hit. That's the one thing that Georgia Tech, I think, against Miami did a pretty good job of doing is finding a way to get Roddy Jones the ball out on the perimeter. You're going to see Josh Nesbitt just turn and pitch the ball out to Roddy Jones. Nothing fancy here. Pitch it out there, and he has the speed. That's the difference maker, trying to get Roddy Jones in space as he beats the tackle of Rennie Curran and a nice gain in first down for Roddy Jones. Gilbert shaken up on that play and walks off the field. So it's a first down for Tech at the 46-yard line. A.J. Smith replaces Gilbert at the right guard. Paul Johnson leading this Tech club in his first season with eight wins, three losses. Right up the gut, Nesbitt rides Dwyer for a couple of yards. 
Well, Nesbitt's a sophomore, Trev, out of Greensboro, Georgia. Never ran the option in high school, but he's found a way to finally understand what Paul Johnson wants. He's been battling some injuries, a hamstring, a couple of ankle sprains, but he told us, I'm just now beginning to get what Paul Johnson wants. And I think that Miami game was sort of indicative of that. You know, Paul said he really had like six, six spring practices, missed two and a half games in Miami, had a couple ankle injuries, and so he really put it together for the first time in our last game. Nesbitt dropped at the 45-yard line. That was a slow motion play. Nesbitt held the ball way too long and unable to get it outside on the corner. Well, it's a good job out there at defensive end. I think it's Jeremy Lomax, number 55. And all he's going to do is sit and read. Watch him patiently read. Waits and waits. Nowhere for Josh Nesbitt to go. Tries to cut it back right into the teeth of that Georgia defense. Ellerby was out there to string it out as well for Georgia. And now third down and nine. Nesbitt stands up in the pocket over the top. Incomplete. Roddy Jones broke up the middle, but C.J. Bird was right on his hip. And that brings up fourth and nine. You know what? That's when the play actually is not going to work. If it's third and long, this is not an offense that's set up for third and long. So, of course, Georgia's secondary not going to bite on the pass to Roddy Jones. A nice series that time by Georgia's defense. Well, Logan Gray is set to return the punt. High snap, Blair looking for a little pooch kick to the corner, good hanger. Takes a bounce and that's like a wedge shot onto the green, hit <laughs> stuck at the 18 yard line and got a roll back to the 15. A 30 yard kick and a timeout, 3.58 to play, opening quarter in Athens. And Trav, let's take a look back at Georgia's season in review. Of course, September 27th, number one in the country at the time and losing to Alabama 41-30, then a big road win at LSU, a 52-38 win directed by Matthew Stafford, and then against the Gators. Florida converted four turnovers, and Georgia lost 49-10. Yeah, I think it was the way they lost those two games, you know? It was really a, a season of two halves. Alabama won 31 points in the first half. They had two turnovers to Georgia, and then Florida 35-7 in the second half when Georgia had four turnovers. So it was those two games and literally a half of both of those two games. Bulldogs start this drive at the 15 yard line and Marino is tripped up. Michael Johnson got a shoe top. Number 93, one of the captains of this Georgia Tech team. Now he's that guy, that athletic defensive end. He's the tough matchup. He's six foot seven. 260 pounds, just in the, a great athlete out on the outside. A difficult matchup all day. Georgia will chip him with a running back or put a tight end to that side to try to deal with Michael Johnson. For a loss of three, second down and 13. Stafford play action, steps up, throws a quick hitter to the far sideline, incomplete. A.J. Green, the intended receiver. Well, and it was interesting, you know, the other coaches talked about finding a way, did Mike Bobo, of getting the hands of these Georgia Tech defenders down. Miami tried to do that, yet he had the athleticism. Did Michael Johnson of coming up with that big pick and taking it back to the house? Now, he simply, as uh, Dave Walmart told us, just a playmaker. In that pocket of Stafford, throws it in, it's picked up! Morgan Burnett at the 10, 5, touchdown, 10! Seventh interception of the season. Well, I guess that's how you get right back into this game if you're Georgia Tech. That time Tech brought a little pressure. Brad Jefferson, the middle linebacker, came on a blitz. They sat back playing man-to-man -man with a safety free. Morgan Burnett standing in the middle of the field just reading the eyes of Stafford. And what a terrific play by Morgan Burnett. Scott Blair will try to tie this game up with seven. Seventh interception of the season, a box snap. It's the little things. 
seven six. Chandler Anderson had trouble with that snap number 85 trying to run it in but a moment ago Stafford just a little pressure Craig he stands in there man free Burnett reads it all the way brings it in and takes it back to the house and Trev I don't know if this is this ball is on the it is I don't know if the rain had something to do with it but it's a 7 6 Georgia lead we'll be back on CBS Georgia seven, Georgia Tech six. Morgan Burnett's interception of 35 yards, but the Yellow Jackets fumbled the extra point snap, and Georgia leads by one. Craig, obviously, with these weather conditions, could loom large in this game. Stafford throwing his ninth interception of the season. Scott Blair set to kick away for Georgia Tech at his 30 yard line. Richard Samuel is deep. Samuel pedals back, takes it at the three yard line. At the 15 20, right up the middle, and is stacked up and pushes the pile to the 25. Craig, what you're going to see, Georgia Tech here, they're going to be man up here in the front, but you've got two deep behind it. So man under, two deep zone behind it. And as Stafford goes back, you're going to get the pressure from the blitz from 51, Brad Jefferson. It's just an ill-advised pass from Stafford, as apparently he doesn't see Morgan Burnett just standing outside the hash, taking back his seventh interception to the house. And as you mentioned, Matthew Stafford now with nine interceptions on the year. Now, now the rain beginning to fall heavy once again. It rained hard last night, early this morning. Moreno stacked up, and you can see the Georgia Tech's defense. That last play has really elevated their game. Anthony Barnes, number 12, the outside linebacker with the tackle. And if you stop no Sean Marino you really stopped Georgia football well it's all about number 24 we talked about but look at 12 Anthony Barnes that's a good job of getting inside the block to spill it to the outside but then goes ahead and makes the play on Marino leads the SEC and rushes and yards 1244 coming into this game against Tech second down Marino again off the left side stumbles regains his footing on this wet turf and pedals to the 33 yard line Burnett the rover back makes the tackle after a pickup of eight good job of finding the hole this time they're going to come with another blitz as Dave Womack brings the inside linebackers look at that hole right there for Marino kind of runs away from both Jefferson and Jackson the linebackers of Tech 5'11", 207 pounder is no Sean Marino. Don't let the weight fool you. This guy is strong, built low to the ground, and you have to hit him hard to knock him down. Nine carries, 36 yards here in the opening quarter. Under a minute 30 to play, a sidearm slingshot. How about that? As Stafford makes something out of nothing. Marino, first down, Georgia. What a great play by Matthew Stafford that time. Watch Stafford as he's going to feel the pressure again from Michael Johnson, six foot seven. He gets in the air. Stafford waits. Little sidearm delivery, as you mentioned, Craig. Look at the poise by Stafford to throw underneath the leaping Michael Johnson and a nice gain for Marino. Yeah, 16 yard pickup. Showing some poise at Stafford after the pick by Burnett on the last Georgia series. High formation play action. Stafford near sideline. Right on the button and a great catch. A.J. Green, did you see the hands? Stafford's pass. All right, Timmy, North Carolina State, Miami, 7-7 here in Athens, 7-6. Georgia over Georgia Tech. And Stafford has the Bulldogs knocking on the door again at the 39-yard line at Georgia Tech. Stafford goes shotgun and flags her down after the handoff to Marino. Prior to the snap, false start, number 60 the offense. Five yard penalty, first down. So now first and 15 facing Georgia at the 45 yard line. Marino up the middle. 
You cannot shoulder tackle this guy. Picks up 10 to the 33-yard line. Burnett with the stop. Well, the first quarter has come to an end here in Athens. Georgia 7, Georgia Tech 6 will return after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the Home Depot SEC on CBS. We start the second quarter here in Athens with Georgia up by one over Georgia Tech, 7-6. Trey Bowler, Jack Trev Alberts. You get a feeling the way Georgia's moved the football, Trev, this should be a two-touchdown ball game. But the interception by Stafford has kept the Yellow Jackets close. Yeah, Georgia offensively has had a lot of big plays in the first quarter. Defensively, I thought Georgia did a really nice job. But, of course, this game is often about turnovers. It's been that way for Georgia this whole year. And the one big play, a terrific play from Morgan Burnett has Tech only down one as we start the second quarter. Over nine minutes on the field in that opening quarter by Georgia. Stafford shows the football, rolls out, sets, throws, cut! At the 15-yard line and a beautiful grab by Michael Moore, the junior from Fort Lauderdale. Play action is so important for this Georgia offense. A little play action, Stafford, as he gets to the outside, and there's so much attention on A.J. Green. Mohamed Masakwai, look at Michael Moore as he steps up. Good protection from the offensive line, and a bullet strike on the run from Stafford to Michael Moore. A pick up of 20, first and 10 inside the 15 for Georgia. Sutherland and Marino in the backfield, the I formation. Second play of this second quarter. Marino slices, stacked up still on his feet to the nine-yard line. Oh, so tough. So tough at 207 pounds. Yeah, just a guy, and we've talked about it a lot, but a guy that you simply cannot bring down on first contact. He just has that unique ability. You know, Tommy Tuberville, the head coach at Auburn, said he's a lot like Cadillac Williams. He has the moves. He has that elusive ability, but he also has the power between the tackles. And Trev, he's got durability. He certainly does, playing in this conference with as many carries as he gets every week. Averages nearly six yards every time he touches the ball in the backfield. Stafford changing up the play at the line of scrimmage. Play clock at seven at the 10-yard line. Stafford, three-step drop, hit the hot slap. Touchdown, Mazzaclaw! Georgia! Well, you got to feel good for another senior, Craig. How about Mohamed Massaqua, a young man who, as a sophomore, had a case of the drops, and the fans in Athens were down on Massaqua, but he's come back, had a huge senior year, gets inside the corner, and how about the throw from Stafford between the linebacker and the corner? Walsh kicks the extra point. And Stafford. Pumps and fires on the slant to Massaqua. Sixth touchdown of the season from the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. 14-6, Georgia. Larry Munson, <laughs> legendary radio voice of the Bulldogs, honored in between quarters. Munson called his first game back in 1966, retired earlier this year, leaving behind a bowl full of Bulldog memories. And Trev, would Larry Munson like to be in the booth today? He probably had two of his better calls of his career on this afternoon. A couple of huge plays offensively for the Bulldogs. Eight plays, 420 off the clock, and Massaqua, the 10-yard touchdown reception. Boy, Stafford showing some poise after that pick. Comes back and leads Georgia to a touchdown. And on that drive, four for four. 58 yards passing and you know against Florida had three interceptions the next week playing against Kentucky had 376 yards and no interceptions Roddy Jones at the nine at the 20 25 breaks a tackle and pushes his way to the 35 yard line Okay, let's go back and take a look at that touchdown and you find out why it worked. Let's go look at the linebacker right here. And what you're going to see, it's a three-step drop, and that's Kyle Jackson at linebacker. And watch Stafford. He fits it right in between the corner, Mario Butler and Kyle Jackson. 
a nice throw from Matthew Stafford. But again, three-step drop, getting it to his wide receiver. Good drop by Massaquai. But before Kyle Jackson, the linebacker, could get back into his drop. Already 132 yards passing, two touchdowns for Stafford. And he has shared the ball. Six different receivers. On the late pitch. Oh, did Georgia string it out? Roddy Jones could not escape the grasp of Brian Evans. Craig, it doesn't start out good for him. Look at the penetration in the backfield initially. And so Nesbitt does a good job, pitches it, and look at Georgia as they take care of their responsibilities. Brian Evans steps up from his free safety position and brings down Roddy Jones. Trev, you know this, and anybody who watched option football, Navy, Army, any, any of the academies, if you play those teams like at Georgia Tech now, the key word is discipline. Absolutely, and Georgia Bulldog fans will tell you that this has been a defense that at times has not been disciplined. They have so far today. Nesbitt on the pitch, Roddy Jones down the sideline and taken down by the caller inside the 30. And Jones is whistled down at the 27 by Daryl Gamble. So it didn't work on the far side. You go near side on the same play. Well, and that's the difficulty with this offense. They stay with what they do. They force you to be disciplined every single time. Some bad angles that time. But good effort down the field from Daryl Gamble to finally bring down Roddy Jones. A well-executed option that time from Josh Nesbitt. Just about the time, Craig, you think you've got this option figured out. You make a couple stops in a row, and all of a sudden, they get to the perimeter. They get in space with a guy like Roddy Jones, a difference maker, a guy with some speed, and there's your big play for Georgia Tech. Now, Roddy Jones, this entire Georgia Tech backfield will hit you and hit you in a hurry. He averages 7.5 yards a carry. Dwyer, the lone back, and maybe a yard to the 25. So, so far, Dwyer's been held by Georgia's defense, and this is the top rusher in the ACC. Yeah, done a good job that time. That defensive line, again, pushed Joseph Gilbert, number 70, back into the offensive backfield of Georgia Tech. Nowhere to go for Dwyer. Five carries now, only 11 yards on the afternoon. And he's been uh, tough the last three ball games. 45 carries, 431 yards, and five touchdowns. The pitch, Dwyer has a lane and bangs his way for a first down inside the 20, down to the 17-yard line. And see, that's a good job that time by Josh Nesbitt. If you're the quarterback of an option offense, the important thing is it's all about numbers. He comes to the line of scrimmage, sees that he's got a numbers advantage to the left side, and watch him there. Read the defensive end that time out there. Jeremy Lomax pitches it to the outside to Dwyer. He gets to the second level, and there you see the strength and speed and as they get a first down again for Georgia Tech. Ridden down by Rashad Jones. So Tech trying to answer after the touchdown pass to Massaqua. It's first and 10 at the 17-yard line of Georgia. And up the middle, Nesbitt on the quarterback keeper. Maybe a bit of surprise for that Georgia defense. He's been going on the, on the edges. This time, Nesbitt takes it right to the heart. Well, and what he does that time, Marcus Wright, number three. He's only a freshman, but does a pretty good job of leading up into the hole. Sort of a designed quarterback run that time as Josh Nesbitt fakes to the fullback, gets into that fullback mesh, then follows number three, Marcus Wright, in for a nice game. And you mentioned that Nesbitt's been uh, banged up a bit. Two and a half games missed with a hamstring. He's turned and sprained both ankles. Second down short at the Georgia eight-yard line. Another keeper, Nesbitt. Leans in past the five to the four. First down, and the Yellow Jackets will be a first and goal. Now, Randy Curran stepped up and made a pretty nice play that time as he sort of was there for the fullback and then the quarterback. Josh Nesbitt didn't give it. Randy Curran stayed in there. You know the only thing I like about Randy Curran is you can learn a lot, Craig, about players based on how they play in the toughest games. 14 tackles against Alabama, 14 against LSU, 15 at Kentucky, and 9 against Auburn. A great year from Randy Curran. Now it came in with 98 tackles to lead Georgia. First and goal for the four-yard line. Nesbitt turns it up and is stacked up at the three. Jeremy Lomax, 55, led the charge. 
Talked about this Georgia defense, and look at the penetration right there. Good job along the defensive line. I'll tell you, Jeremy Lomax, number 55, is having a day so far out there at defensive end, standing up the offensive tackle, then getting off that block and making the play. Akeem Den in on that tackle as well. Second down goal. Eighth play of this drive coming up. Nesbitt under center, long snap count, pitch. Lucas Cox. And Tech strikes back. Boy, you got to give Paul Johnson and this offense an awful lot of credit. Of course, Georgia had all the momentum in the game. All the folks here at Sanford Stadium excited. And look at the drive that Georgia Tech puts together as a little pitch to Lucas Cox gets to the outside, and Tech responds. And this will be a two-point try for Georgia Tech. That last extra point was a fumbled snap. And so Tech will try to tie this game up. Tech one for one on two-point conversions this season. Can they make it two for two? Nesbitt wants to throw. Flushed out of the pocket. Back line of the end zone throws it away. And so Georgia denies the two-point opportunity. And Lucas Cox on the pitch from Nesbitt. Runs it in from three yards, and the Home Depot SEC on CBS will continue after this word from your local station. Welcome back to Athens, Georgia 14, Georgia Tech 12. Time now for the playbook presented by the Hartford. I'll go back to that last touchdown, and we're going to take a look at number three. It's Marcus right there and all again Georgia Tech it's a numbers game as they seal that outside on the quick pitch a little misdirection with Dwyer and look right here the free run from Lucas Cox only 24 carries coming into this game and a wonderful response from Paul Johnson that offense eight plays 65 yards responding to Georgia's second touchdown Cox scores for the third time this season from two yards out. And Trev, you have to ask, was it a good decision to try this game, to, to try to tie this game in the rain, or do you kick it and make it a one point? Right now, you go back and forth on it, but you had the momentum. You just had that great drive trying to get it down. They're trying to tie up the score, but if you're not careful, you keep chasing that one point all afternoon long. Samuel, short kick, 12-yard line. Cuts up the middle, stacked up. And then pushes again for extra yards at the 24-yard line. Uh, Timmy, I tell you, you have it down, my friend. And by the way, if Virginia beats Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech will play in the ACC title game December 6th in Tampa. They would win the Coastal then, and they would play either Boston College or Florida State for the right to win the ACC and get to a BCS game. Georgia starts this drive at the 24-yard line. Marino is dropped for a two-yard loss. Well, Matthew Stafford, Craig, said it's sort of an up and down game so far. Pretty good here as he finds Trip Chandler. But here was the backbreaker as he throws it, and Morgan Burnett takes it back to the house. But Stafford would respond as he finds an open receiver, Mohamed Massaquai. And Georgia is 13 and 2 when Matthew Stafford throws two touchdowns or more. And two touchdowns thrown here in the first half. Impressive comeback after the pick by Morgan Burnett. Second down, 10, clock under nine minutes to play in the first half. Stafford up over the top at the 45-yard line. Massaqua up on the top rung of the ladder and two hands it for a Georgia first down. Boy, Matthew Stafford, with the exception of that one poor decision, there he is, Mohamed Massaqua. Everybody concerned about the other receivers. Look at the good route that time as he works back inside Tony Clark. Here's Stafford's view as he looks down the field, looks to the left first, has great protection from that young offensive line, and delivers a bullet to Mohamed Massaqua. A 23-yard pass play. And Georgia with a first down at their own 46-yard line. Play action in round. Massaqua now wants to throw. Incomplete trickery by Mark Ritt. 
and Mario Butler shaking his head. It's not going to be working on my side. I love the call from Mike Bobo, but a great job by Tech of defending this play. Look at it here as you got the little end around from Massaqua. Going to throw it all the way. Is trying to find A.J. Green. Actually held it a little too long. Green was open initially. And Mario Butler does a nice job of not allowing A.J. Green to get behind him. You never know what's coming in a rivalry game. You never know. Four wide receivers, three stacked to the top. Marino, 49-yard line. Third down and six as the clock is under eight minutes to play in the first half. Again, four wide receivers. Stafford shotgun, pedals, throws, slant, caught, massive ball, watch out, gone! Ten, five, touchdown, Georgia! <laughs> Greg Tech has just not had any answer for Matthew Stafford and these wide receivers. Nothing spectacular about the route. It's just a little skinny slant to Muhammad Massaqua, who breaks two tackles. I believe it's Michael Peterson and Dominic Reese who whiff on the tackle on Massaqua. And this big strike, big play capability of this offense has Georgia with 21 points. Walsh kicks the extra point. All smiles on that Georgia sideline. And how about Stafford in this first half, despite the pick, has been dead on. And Massaquan rumbles 49 yards, and it's a 21 to 12 lead for Georgia. 21-12 Georgia, 13th ranked in the country over the 18th ranked Yellow Jackets. Five plays, Trev, 76 yards, quick hit offense, 222 off the clock. As Stafford goes 49 yards for his second uh, second strike to Massaqua. Well, it's been big play after big play. We talked in the open about the big plays from Georgia Tech's offense. How about Matthew Stafford with three touchdowns already in the first half? How about since that interception? Stafford is six for six, 130 yards and a touchdown. You know, Georgia's played well this year with their backs against the wall. When they've been questioned, they've come back strong and Sort of symbolic of their year. Stafford, after that interception, as you mentioned, Craig, has come back with a lot of poise, and his receivers have made plays for him all afternoon. Walsh from the 30. Short kick at the 11. Roddy Jones, 20. Tries to cut it up the middle and is spun down at the 23-yard line. Yeah, I don't think I would. I'm too old. <laughs> I'd do it if you were doing it. Okay, we'll team up. Under seven minutes to play in this first half. Uh, first half of big plays, and Kentuck answer on the pitch near side. And Roddy Jones dishes out some hits, and he'll take a hit back at the 28-yard line. Well, stepping up on senior day, you bet they have. Stafford leading the way with three touchdown throws, 204 yards. You know, senior day is that day you will never forget. Obviously, for Mohamed Massaquai, last game here between the hedges. Is it going to be the last game between the hedges for Matthew Stafford and no Sean Marino? A couple guys, both eligible, of course, for the NFL draft. This could be their last home game as well. Second down, five. Tech. Flyer. Push the pile on second effort to the 31 yard line. Jurious win, number 99. You know, John Fabris is the defensive, defensive ends coach at Georgia, and he's done an outstanding job of having his defensive ends play this options. Defensive ends are so important. They haven't had the consistent pass rusher this season, but so far this afternoon, Roderick Battle, Jeremy Lomax, Jarius Win having outstanding afternoons. Tech is yet to convert on a third down, 0 for 2. They need three. A long two. Stepping back, no. Nesbitt never could get the ball on the edge. And Georgia 
drops Nesbitt back at the 30-yard line. Cade Weston, number 91. Well, look at the penetration. It's instantaneous in the backfield. Brandon Wood initially, and then as Nesbitt tries to get down the line of scrimmage, look at old Cade Weston. 97 in the backfield initially, and there's Weston beating his block. Boy, this Georgia defense, Craig, has been challenged all year. Last three games have struggled. Really, last four games, especially against the run. They have answered the bell here this afternoon. Georgia calls a timeout, their first charged timeout of this game. At the 5.03 mark. Would you have ever imagined Brett Favre have the year coming out of the Packers, all the turmoil, all the all the controversy now going to the Big Apple. And you know Brett Favre the ultimate competitor. You don't play as many years as he's had having that streak of starting games without being a competitor. And once you start hearing people questioning and challenging your motives obviously a motivated quarterback in Brett Favre. Well Blair is on to punt. His first punt went 30 yards. He'll be at his 15. And back to receive Logan Gray. Georgia could have fine field position here. Short punt, good hang time. Gray waves for the fair catch, and it takes a bounce out of bounds around the 44-yard line. So a timeout here in Athens, 4.54 to play. And it's Georgia 21, 10, 12. Well, you look at the first five possessions, Trev, uh, for Georgia. Touchdown on the opening drive. They give it up on downs. Then Stafford throws the pick. Tech runs it back for a touchdown. And then Stafford answers back with very impressive back-to-back -back touchdown drives. Yeah, Mike Bobo, the offensive coordinator, has done a great job. Remember, this is a Tech defense, strength of their team. Only allowed 296 yards of total offense a game. Had forced 27 turnovers and had 30 sacks coming into this game. Play action pass. Stafford sets those feet, goes up top. But flags are down in the Georgia backfield. Holding 71 on the offense. 10 yards to previous spot. Repeat first down. So Cordy Glenn, the freshman, the left guard, number 71, and they're going to bring it all the way back. Yeah, 71, Cordy Glenn's going to be working on Derek Morgan, number 91. There's Derek Morgan, a little bull rush first and then continues trying to get back and there's the hold right there that left hand of Cordy Glenn you see the official does a great job there it's a good call definitely holding well penalty has been a big problem for Mark Richt and his Bulldogs averaging nearly nine flags a game that's second most in the nation trailing TCU and they've come at just crucial situations just like the last play huge play for that offense now of course called back from that holding call. Took away a 49-yard pickup. Quick hitter, Michael Moore, breaks one tackle, then it is hit from behind and hit at the 37-yard line. Cooper Taylor with the tackle. Foul play, indeed, at times. Well, there's those penalties, and as I mentioned earlier, remember those two big games, Alabama, first half when Alabama just went crazy on Georgia. Georgia had two turnovers. Then the second half against Florida, four crucial turnovers in that half. So it's been a season of penalties and turnovers for this Georgia Bulldog team. Under four minutes to play in this opening half. Tech showing defense, and now Stafford's going to check off at the line. Now Tech showing the blitz. Here comes the blitz. Stafford in the pocket. It collapses. Slingshots it out of bounds. Oh, there's a flag. It's late. In fact, one Tech defender came over and pointed and said, hey, is that grounding? And the official threw the flag. it down goes with it all right let's take a look here here's Stafford initially good protection the offensive line he doesn't panic he stays poised tries to get back out of there well there's his receiver right there there's Mohammed Massaquai he's not that far away this should not be intentional grounding so now it's third down and 19 To say the least, an interesting call. Hmm. 
And so Stafford again as the Yellow Jackets show blitz they back off. Here they come Stafford stands up throws and overthrows his wide receiver A.J. Green. And that's going to bring up a punting situation for the Bulldogs and this crowd of red. I should say mostly red. I do see yellow a few in this crowd at Sanford Stadium. This will be the first punt today for Georgia. And Brian Mims back inside his own 15 yard line. Andrew Smith awaits line drive at the 31 spins out of a tackle. Smith flags down two flags are down three flags are now on the ground. Oh this field is littered. 42 yard kick and a nine yard return but multiple flags down. Busy first half trip for Tom uh, Zamorski and his crew. Uh, you're going to get about two or three blocks in the back. I saw one on Anthony Barnes, number 12. Game on the road in Stillwater. Bedlam plays Oklahoma State. Tech with the ball down 21 12. Pitch out. Nesbitt finds his B back wire and has bounced out of bounds after a pickup of three at the 28 yard line. And Rennie Curran, number 35, out of Snellville, Georgia. You know, Craig, you can just see the speed of this Georgia defense. Once they had done a good job of stopping the B-back, the fullback. Once they establish that, force Georgia Tech to get to the perimeter. Remember, we, Willie Martinez, the defensive coordinator, told us, we want to take the fight to Georgia Tech. They certainly have done that with the speed of linebackers like Rennie Curran. McGuire, eight carries, just 28 yards here in the first half. McGuire lines up behind Nesbitt. Seven step drop in trouble. Flags are down. Nesbitt on his back foot. Throws nearly intercepted at midfield, but a flag back at the 21. Holding. 99 times out of 100, when that flag is tossed on a pass play, holding. it's holding. 75 in the offense. 10 yards for the previous spot. Repeat second down. Well, coming up on the Geico Halftime Report, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman. They'll get you caught up on all the scores and highlights, plus a preview of the Iron Bowl at Auburn against number one, Alabama. That's coming up on the Geico Halftime Report. Well, you know, Craig, you mentioned that Alabama Crimson Tide. Here's a team ranked preseason number 24 in one poll. They weren't even ranked in, in another poll, so. Give Coach Saban credit. Can John Parker Wilson in that 99th ranked offense throw enough against that Auburn defense? Nesbitt under center, handoff straight up the middle, and it's Dwyer to the 26 yard line. Well, Willie Martinez, Trev, has to be happy with the way his defense has been able to handle this triple option of Tech. Well, they've done a nice job, as I mentioned earlier, of stopping that fullback. Initial penetration by these defensive ends. Jeremy Lomax has had a nice day. Jarius Will, Jarius Wynn has had a nice day. Geno Atkins, Corvey Irvin. That front four of Georgia has dominated the line of scrimmage from Georgia Tech. Third down. And seven under two to play. First half. Nesbitt. Tucks and runs. Wanted to pitch, but Georgia again. Look how. The dogs string it out. Demarcus Dobbs 
led it with one, two, three, four, five, six Georgia Bulldogs stringing it out. Oh, you can't imagine the play that Demarcus Dobbs just made. Number 58, take a look at him right there. There's going to be a block that happens or attempted to be happened from number 71. Cord Howard goes down for the cut, and Demarcus Dobbs plays off it and makes a great play in the backfield. And welcome back, Sanford Stadium. 97,000 on hand to watch Georgia, Georgia Tech. And the Bulldogs lead 21 12 with 1.32 to play in this opening half. Scott Blair into punt, and Logan Gray back to receive. Low snap, and it's away. Into a slight drizzle, and again, this ball is, takes a left turn. So timeouts remaining. Georgia Tech with three, Georgia with one, with 123 to play. Craig, I think I just saw something I haven't seen for a long time. Michael Johnson, defensive end, was a gunner on the punt team for Georgia Tech that time. That tells you about his athleticism. Georgia loads up the near side with three wide outs. Shotgun Stafford, plenty of time. Pop throws, and that ball is batted down at the line of scrimmage. Michael Johnson at 6'7, hard to throw over the big man. And how about Stafford in this first half? You know what? You could hear a, a bit of a sigh, maybe a few boos when Stafford threw that pick. And it was taken back by Burnett. But boy, he gathered his senses and showed a lot of poise. He really has. You know, Mike Bova, the offensive coordinator, told us that Matthew Stafford is simply such an unselfish player. Here's a guy who could throw the ball 40, 50 times. How about those quarterbacks in the Big 12 South? He doesn't do that. He's got a great running game. They play action. But yet, over 200 yards passing already here in the first half. Again, the shotgun, play clock down to three, as Stafford sets up at the 35-yard line, throws it up, that ball is free, batted away, and incomplete. Good play by Mario Butler, that time working on A.J. Green, Craig. And again, Stafford looking for the freshman. You get someone out in the flat. That's Michael Moore in the flat. Green was open initially. That's just a good break and good defense from Mario Butler. You see Stafford telling the freshman, you got to come back to me. Come back to me. The ball will be there. A.J. Green, terrific speed, Trev. Runs the 40 and 4-4. And makes those razor sharp cuts. Third down, Georgia. Stafford, quick drop, quick throw. It's complete. Massaqua has been his go-to man in crunch time today. And it's first down, Georgia, at the Tech 41-yard line. Cooper Taylor, the freshman free safety with the tackle. Massaqua just getting inside the corner. Michael Peterson again. And what a day the senior Massaqua is having. Georgia Tech has not had an answer for him this afternoon. Stafford floats one out. And pushed out at the 29, A.J. Green. And that stops the clock. So Georgia doesn't have to use a timeout. They have one remaining here, and they're thinking touchdown with 54 ticks left on the second quarter clock. Now Georgia Tech being conservative in their secondary, trying to keep everything in front of them. Of course, after Georgia's had success getting behind their safeties, Georgia's just content to throw those little out routes to A.J. Green and Massaqua. And Green now owns the single season record for receptions by a freshman with 54. He edges out Terrence Edwards who held the record back in 99. So this is a young, special, wide receiver for Georgia to set up the screen. It's caught Chapas, the fullback, hurdles, 10, 5, and bounced out of bounds! Mike Bobo is throwing everything at Georgia Tech. What a great block by big Cordy Glenn, the freshman, 71. He's going to pull all the way out to the left side. Georgia loves to set up the screen. Look at the block on the outside that time on Rashad Reed. And Sean Chappas does a great job getting behind the big uglies. There's Ben Jones, the freshman center. The freshman lead the way. One of the better screen teams in the Southeastern Conference is Georgia. First and goal, Bulldogs at the three. Stafford throws and fires a strike. Again, Massaqua. Touchdown, Georgia. Or is it? Touchdown, Bulldogs. Stafford all the way. Just a little slant to Massaqua that time as 
Rashad Reed, the freshman, once again, gets beat to the inside by Massaqua, who gets the hand underneath the ball. Extra point. Splits the uprights. Blair Walsh and Georgia strikes just before the half and builds a 28 to 12 lead. Stafford now with 21 touchdown throws on the season. Oh, the Grinch. A little early, but it is almost Christmas time. 28 to 12. And what a ball game for Muhammad Massaquai. Senior day, and he has come through. A day to remember, six catches, 114 yards, and three touchdowns, courtesy of Matthew Stafford. And Coach Rick talked to us about Mohamed Massaquai, and he said, you know, just really respect that young man. He was a highly touted young man. Here comes A.J. Green, and really took A.J. Green under his arm and really helped the young freshman understand what it took to play at the highest levels. Never complained, came back strong, has been a real leader for this football team. Walsh the kick, taken short at the 29-yard line. And fighting for yards, pushing the pop hill to the 40. That was Brad Jefferson, number 51. So now you have to think about third and fourth quarters. Yep. What will Paul Johnson, who is the offensive coordinator and head coach of Tech, what's the game plan in the third? Well, oh, I can tell you what exactly he's going to do, and he's going to do exactly what he did at Navy. You continue doing what you do. That's what you do. I mean, if you all of a sudden try to turn yourself into a shotgun team, rather than being 28-12, it'll be 70-12. to So you continue to stay with what got you to this game. You're 8-3 and three for a reason. Nesbitt tucks and runs. Nifty move, cuts back middle of the field, leans out, nice run of nine yards to the 48-49 yard line. And once again, Rennie Kern in on the tackle as the clock hits 18 seconds to play. And Georgia Tech will use a timeout. They have two remaining. And Paul Johnson will go with a 30. We'll keep it here. You know, Craig, the thing about the option is this, is no matter what you do defensively, Paul Johnson always has an answer to what you're trying to do. So they'll go in at halftime, try to figure out exactly what Willie Martinez is doing, try to figure out if it's a schematic problem or whether they're just better athletes manhandling the front of their offensive line. But they'll make some corrections. They'll block it differently. But obviously, if Jonathan DeWire doesn't get involved in this game, Georgia Tech really is not going to have a chance. Now, Rennie Curran comes off the field the heart and soul of this Georgia defense and you have to remember too, Trev that Georgia has had the extra prep time for this triple option they coming off the bye week many times all most teams only have three days on the field before they see this triple option Georgia has had the blessing of actually having that bye week to prepare and give credit to Bakari Rambo a young man who's redshirting a former option quarterback in high school done a good job of giving the picture on scout team for that Georgia defense Nesbitt rolls out throws a deep ball man coverage it's incomplete oh inside the 10 yard line Demarius Thomas showing some breakaway speed and that ball just a little overthrown Prince Miller had him covered Remember, we talked, too, about taking some shots. And, yeah, you got to continue to do that. Demarius Thomas has 36 catches on the season so far. So, But the difficult thing is, Craig, if you haven't established that option at all, that faking doesn't really do much. I mean, Georgia gets content to stand back there, play man coverage the entire day. And so far, Prince Miller and Asher Allen done a pretty nice job on these Tech receivers. Third down and two. Nesbitt on the rollout, sets up, pumps in traffic and throws it out of bounds. Now this crowd is going to want to flag because you remember what happened to Stafford. Identical play, and the flag came out late. But I think you'd even argue that there was nobody close to that ball in, in comparison to what Georgia had. We saw Mohamed Massaquai in the area of where Stafford threw it. Pretty obvious that time that nobody was near where Josh Nesbitt threw that ball. So that brings up fourth down. 
I think both calls, though, Trev, if you look back, was it was was even Stafford outside that tackle box? And of course, remember, once you're outside the tackle box, you got yourself a free play. Now there's a timeout. Georgia Tech will call timeout. One remaining for the Yellow Jackets, one remains for Georgia. So Paul Johnson, you can tell by the look on his face, not pleased with his first half. Downs, punt, touchdown, and then back-to-back -back punts, and what will he do on fourth down with seven seconds to play? Well, and it's the number of plays on those drives. You remember talking to Mike Bobo, he said, we really have to take care of the football. We might only get two possessions a quarter. Well, that certainly hasn't been the case so far as Paul Johnson and his offense just have not been able to sustain any drives, and that's put a lot of pressure on that Tech defense trying to defend the playmakers that Georgia puts out on the field. Paul Johnson, five years, head coach, Georgia, Georgia Southern, 1AA, went on to Navy, rebuilt the midshipmen in six seasons, and now in his first year here at Georgia Tech. Well, the man's won 73% of his games. He knows what he's doing. Dwyer, the lone back, they load up three wide receivers, top of the screen. Nesbitt under pressure. Final play of this half, throws it up top. There'll be a jump ball. Intercepted Georgia. Jones, Rashad Jones won the jump. There's a second left up on the clock. Jones with the interception is fourth of the season, but there is a second. Both teams are breaking for the locker room, but they're going to come out and they're going to run a play. Now they're going to run it down. One clock has zero. The other clock has one. So we're going to halftime. And at the half, Georgia with a 28 to 12 lead on Georgia Tech. Welcome back as we get ready to start the third quarter here in Athens, Georgia 28 and Georgia 12. Georgia Tech 12. It's the battle between the hedges. Craig Buller, Jack, Trev Alberts, uh, glad you're with us. Hope you enjoyed the first half. And it was a half, Trev, of big plays. It really was, and it was from the seniors for Georgia. How about Muhammad Massaqua with a huge first half? Had three touchdowns on that first half. Just gets inside the corner that time. Look at this. Six catches, 114 yards as he breaks a couple tackles there. Then down the end zone once again. Good hands. Good offense. It had 318 yards in the first half. And how about that Georgia defense? Stopping Jonathan DeWire, the leader in rushing in the ACC. Nine carries for 37 yards in the first half. Let's take a look at the halftime trends presented by Home Depot. Georgia Tech. 278 yards on the ground per game today 123 yards Georgia Tech two touchdowns missed two PAT attempts by the way Stafford a career four touchdown throws in this first half of play and Massaqua you can't play better well Stafford's been truly remarkable in this game so far and had one turnover one poor decision at the quarterback position but he's responded over 270 yards in the first half alone for Matthew Stafford Georgia Tech, remember, won the toss to start this game. They deferred. They wanted the, the football to start the third quarter. And Trev, interesting to see what Paul Johnson will come up with here to start the second half. The fourth-ranked ground game in college football has been held in check thus far. And that ball again goes out of bounds, so Tech will have fine field position to start the third quarter. Untouched free kick out of bounds against the kicking team. The ball being played, put in play at the 40-yard line. First down. So where's the sting of these Yellow Jackets? Uh, Trev Alberts, Nesbitt, a one of six passing, 19 yards. Dwyer only... 37 yards off nine carries. Well, it all starts with a quarterback, Josh Nesbitt. He's going to have to get this offense in gear, and the offensive line is going to have to reassert itself, control the line of scrimmage to give Nesbitt an opportunity to get to the perimeter. Option, first play out, and the pitch. Breaks the tackle, Dwyer. At the 40, 30, watch out, gone, Dwyer, 10, 5, touchdown! And what a way to start the second half in Athens. Well, there you have it, Craig, the 
Sting is back, apparently, as Josh Nesbitt that time runs the option to perfection and gets the ball out of the perimeter to Jonathan Dewaner, who breaks a couple tackles. And hello, momentum right back to Georgia Tech. A 60-yard run by Jonathan Dwyer. The sophomore out of Marietta came in leading the ACC and rushing over 107 yards a ball game. Picks up 60 to start the third quarter. And again, Tech will go for two. Nesbitt, pitch, Dwyer can walk in, touchdown, or I should say two, it felt like a touchdown. Randy Curran made the tackle, but Dwyer scores two, and a 60-yard run. Once you get Dwyer in the open field, forget it. Option to perfection. A 60-yard run, and Georgia Tech has closed the gap to eight. 60-yard run by Jonathan Dwyer has closed the gap to eight. 28-20, Georgia. And let's take a look now at the Home Depot tools for success. And the tools for success, of course, is to get the football to Jonathan Dwyer. Look at it here on the option. Gets the perimeter. Just breaks a couple tackles. That's an L. Ellerby, number 33. Ray Curran there, Rashad Jones as well. And then they come right back with a two-point conversion. The option run to perfection as Dwyer has the speed to get to the corner. That's Georgia Tech's 15th touchdown drive this season of two minutes or less. 12 seconds. That's how, and, they, and they break that lead of Georgia in half from 16 to 8. And if you're a Georgia fan, you got to feel like you've been dominating this game. You've been in control of this game. And yet, give Tech credit. Paul Johnson and his crew only down 8 now as they continue to fight here early in the third quarter. Richard Samuel set to receive the kick from Scott Blair. At the three-yard line. And you can tell Tech has found renewed life as the special teams make the stop back at the 10-yard line. Led by Peterson. Will you step it up on senior day? Stafford, the career of four touchdown passes. Marino, 54 yards rushing. And Massaqua with three touchdown grabs, 114 yards. And so now if you're Matthew Stafford in this offense, it's important now. You've established the big plays in the first half, but you have to respond to that Tech touchdown. It took Tech 12 seconds to get on the board. Stafford goes to his bread and butter. Marino off the right side, picks up two, maybe three. And Brad Jefferson, the inside backer, Wrightsville, Georgia, is his home. The sophomore with the tackle. You know, Craig, there really haven't been a lot of big plays on the ground from Marino. And you have to credit those linebackers. Brad Jefferson, that time Derek Morgan as well in the backfield. All of the big plays for Georgia, of course, have been in that passing game with Stafford, his talented wide receiver. And Moreno is the rushing leader in the SEC. The two tally backs on the field today. Play action, Stafford flush, directs traffic, and now drops that ball out of bounds. And incomplete. It's the call, and the crowd again remembers the last time a similar play happened. A flag came out. Well, Kyle Jackson that time, as Stafford was pushed outside the tackle box so he could to simply throw it away that time. Comes up and gives him a little nudge. Chris Davis, the right guard, 63. Didn't like it a bit. Georgia Tech defense feeding off the energy of that offensive drive. That 12-second drive from Jonathan Dwyer. Now this would loom large if Tech can close out Georgia on three straight plays. It's third down and eight. Stafford shotgun. Blitz is coming. Stafford in trouble. The one at the two going the other way. Still on his feet, Stafford comes right back up at the five, throws, incomplete. Houdini, how did he get out of that? <laughs> oh, look at Matthew Stafford as he's running for his life. Give credit to Tech, that's Anthony Barnes, comes on the blitz. 
Marina, he tries to get rid of it to Stafford. That's a good job that time by Vance Walker, but he doesn't wrap up. And it allows Stafford to get to the outside and just a little short on the pass out to Massaqua. And we've got an injured Tech, Georgia Tech player down at the 10. That was almost disaster for, for, for Georgia when you think about this offense. Third and long, Craig. Tech's defense feeding off that energy comes with the blitz. Almost have a safety. If Vance Walker would have wrapped up, could you imagine the momentum that Tech would have had then? Injured player, Trev, is Anthony Barnes, who brought the pressure on, on Matthew Stafford. Hey, Stafford got to be impressed at 230, showing a little mobility, trying to dodge traffic in the end zone. And it's good to see Barnes up. Well, don't forget, later in the game, we'll have the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler. I may vote for that one. <laughs> it's certainly fun to watch. And, uh, of course, if you're Georgia Tech, that's an opportunity lost. A good job, again, though, by Stafford of feeling that pressure, finding a way to avoid it. And now another special teams play for Georgia. You know, it's been a bit of an adventure all season for their special teams unit. We saw Barnes with the slow walk-off. And now Mims will punt one yard deep in his own end zone. His first part of the day went 42 yards. He'll need a good leg here. Andrew Smith back to receive for Georgia Tech at midfield. And the punt's away. Good punt. Up drive, Smith back to the 35-yard line, breaks the tackle up the 40, heads to the far sideline. Scott Duck still on his feet and is taken down at the 43-yard line. Still fine field position, and Georgia Tech with momentum back on the field. A 52-yard punt, an eight-yard return, and we'll come back to Athens after this. Well, time now for our AFLAC trivia question. Yes, over the last six years, Trev, only two teams have finished in the top ten to end the season. Can you name the two schools? We'll have the answer for you a little bit later. Georgia Tech with momentum to start the second half. They score a 60-yard run by Dwyer, and then they get the big defensive stand last time against the Bulldogs. And remember, they are watching the scoreboard. If Virginia beats Virginia Tech, Georgia Tech will play in the ACC title game December 6th in Tampa. Dwyer with the game. Let's take you back to New York. Here's Tim. Timmy, thanks. You look at the ACC Coastal standings. Georgia Tech, 5-3. and three. Miami, 4-3, and three, followed by Virginia Tech. There's a late pitch. And Roddy Jones trying to get on the edge. Out of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Roddy Jones and a first down for Georgia Tech. Look at the last seven possessions for the Yellow Jackets. Didn't go too well, but of course it was that last one. One play, 60 yards, and you can already see it here now, Craig, on this drive. Tech is getting to the perimeter. A great read by Josh Nesbitt. Got it out to Roddy Jones and got a first down. This offense has got to put some drives together, get some first downs to put a little pressure on this Georgia defense. Two wide offs near side, quick hitter right up the gut. One tackle broken by Dwyer. And he picks up five, maybe six. Two teams with just general disdain for one another. The Iron Bowl, one of the best rivalries in the history of college football. Well, Dwyer has now gone over 100 yards rushing the ninth 100-yard game this season. And the pitch, Roddy Jones. And you see a little pattern beginning here, Trev, while you go inside with the Dwyer. You're trying to hit the edge with the speed of Roddy Jones. Roddy Jones certainly has that speed. He averages 7.5 yards a carry. And again, you're trying to get your playmakers in space against those Georgia defenders. That time, Roddy Jones sort of outruns Rennie Kern, the linebacker. You can see this Georgia Tech offense. We talked about going in at halftime and understanding what Georgia was doing defensively, making some adjustment with your offensive line, and clearly 
the job for Paul Johnson was to find a way to get it out to the perimeter to his playmakers. Well, they're moving the chain, so that run by Jones gives Tech four fresh downs. Quarterback keeper and Nesbitt rolled the fullback and then and ran it to the 30-yard line. Lomax with the tackle. And guess who? Rennie Kern was there on the tackle. Another play from Rennie Kern. But again, look at that. That's a four, four and a half yard gain. That's exactly what this offense has to do. Just slow, methodical, get themselves in third and manageable situations. Certainly they've done that so far in the third quarter. Already 86 rushing yards. Of course, 60 by Dwyer on that touchdown run to start the third quarter. The pitch out. What do you expect? It's between the hedges. And Jones took a lick from Rashad Jones. And Georgia trying to get back to to discipline football. Rashad Jones, the safety number nine, comes from the center of the field. And look at him right here. There's a couple guys staying disciplined to the outside. As Rashad Jones comes up and makes a terrific play. It's Georgia's defense now. Third and short, trying to slow down this Tech offense. All oh, the Bulldog fans on their feet. Third down short from the 25-yard line. Quarterback keeper, second effort. It will be close. From this spot, looks to be just a little bit short. Corby Urban made the initial hit, but give Nesbitt some credit on that second effort. Nesbitt's a big kid, 215 pounds, but Corvey Irvin, big number 90, does a good job at the point of attack, gets off the block and hangs on. But as you mentioned, look at Nesbitt continue to fight. Fourth and short now. You know Paul Johnson, Craig. He's already went for it on fourth down, so he's going to go for it, of course, here. 0 for 2 today, though, on fourth down. Dwyer lines up the B-back. Keeper. Believe Nesbitt got it on the lean. <laughs> Urban again met him. Big number 90. I tell you what, we're going to take a look at it. Well, Tech's pointing one way, Georgia's pointing the other. And the officials say, officials time out for measurement. Again, boy, Corvey Irvin is doing a great job at the point of attack. Getting underneath the pads. Look at big number 90 getting under the pads of 71 Cord Howard. And the chains are being stretched. First down. So Tech keeps the drive alive. Let me ask and look ahead. Should Tech score? Paul Johnson, would he go for two? or play it safe and hit, a, a hit a, uh, an extra point. Well, if, if history's likely to repeat itself, it seems to me as if he'll go for two. I mean, the man is fearless. He goes for it on fourth down. He's aggressive. I think he'll go for two. Now you got to find the end zone first as the clock is at 9.13 and running here in the third quarter. Flyer stacked up. No gain on the play. Kate Weston. Number 91. Once again, Craig, the easiest way, of course, to keep this Georgia offense from the end zone is to do what? Make Matthew Stafford and Sean Moreno stand on the sideline. This is a time-consuming, methodical drive for this Tech offense. It's really the first sort of drive we've seen all afternoon. And what do you expect from the option? This is play number 10 of this drive. Second down and a long nine. Roddy Jones in motion. Flags are down. Up top goes Nesbitt. Another flag in the end zone. And it may take a while to sort this one out. Demarius Thomas was the intended receiver. Asher Allen maybe bumped him. But we've got multiple flags on the field. Well, credit Josh Nesbitt for staying with it rather than Sort of just throwing the ball away. Goes up top. Tries to hit Thomas. Covered out there by Asher Allen. Tom Zamorski and his crew huddling up. Trying to there sort are two it out. fouls on the play. Offsides against the defense. is declined. Pass interference against the defense. Will be accepted. 15 yards. Automatic first down.
That's why you always play on. Finish the play, finish the drill. How about Josh Nesbitt finishing the play, wanting to go out to Demarius Thomas, and there's Asher Allen. Little shove in the back. I thought this was a real key matchup. Thomas is 6'3", Allen's 5'10", and Prince Miller 5'8". That's a matchup that Tech coaches have to feel like they can win. But Georgia Tech now inside the 10-yard line, first and goal from the 8-yard line. Under center is Nesbitt. On the pitch, coming near side, Roddy Jones turns the corner, leans in! Touchdown, Tech! Well, the Georgia Tech faithful have made the trip up from Atlanta, Craig, and you got to like what Paul Johnson has done here in the third quarter. Once again, getting the ball in space to his speed, guys. Roddy Jones and a terrific lead block that time from Lucas Cox. And Paul Johnson just answered my question. There you go. Go for two. Nesbitt under center. Tech with an opportunity to tie this game. What's the throw? Tucks into the end zone. Georgia Tech rallies two touchdowns here in the third quarter. Ronnie Jones leans and scores. All the momentum has changed here in Athens. Ronnie finds the edge, and then Paul Johnson goes for two. 28 all between the hedges in Athens. We're glad you're back. 28 all, 16 unanswered by Georgia Tech. 10 plays, 56 yards, and Jones the key on that eight-yard touchdown run. And then the two-point conversion by Nesbitt. And just like that, we're tied. And how about Tech's rushing in the first half? 22 carries for 123 yards. In the third quarter already, 11 carries for 102 yards for Paul Johnson's spread triple option offense. Scott Blair tees it up. And a whole new ball game in Athens. 8-11 to play in the third. And the kick will push Samuel back to the two-yard line. Up the middle he goes, breaks a tackle, and hits a wall and falls to the 24-yard line. Fumble. Tech pointing. Ball was on the ground. Georgia Tech recovers at the 24-yard line. Samuel there as he gets into traffic, sort of held up by the Tech defenders. Ball's out. Ball is out. Ball is out. And what a momentum shift here in the third. 29th forced turnover this season. That is fifth best in the NCAA. For now, Georgia Tech has a chance to take the lead here in the third. Right up the middle. Dwyer. Touchdown. Georgia Tech. Can you believe it? Frank, we talked at halftime about getting the ball to Jonathan Dwyer. Well, Paul Johnson certainly has done that. Just a little inside handoff trap this time to Jonathan Dwyer. Good blocking up front. Nice cutback right there outside the defender at Jonathan DeWire. And this Georgia Tech offense has come alive in the third quarter. And Paul Johnson will truck the PAT. No two-point conversion try here. Snap is good. Kick is away. And through the uprights. Blair at Georgia Tech. Only the third quarter. 35-28. Well, two different emotions for these two schools. On a knee with Mark Rick, Georgia. On the other side of the field, 
They are jumping and celebrating 23 unanswered points in the third quarter. One play after the fumble, 23 yards, 35-28 Tech. off the two takeaways. Greg, it's all been done on the ground. The third quarter just dominated Tech. 125 yards rushing in the third quarter. How about Georgia? They got two. It's time for 24 to bring his energy to this Bulldog offense. Boy, Tech flipped the switch at halftime. And Georgia has turned their lights out for now. A short, short kick. Up at the 16 yard line. Samuel breaks a tackle. I oh, love this kid's effort. He takes a pile with him to the 29 yard line. And Steve, uh, Trev, how about Aflac? One more time, the trivia question. And over the last six years, only two teams have finished in the top 10 to end the season. Can you name the two schools? Hmm. I think I got one. Well, one's on the field there today. Georgia and USC. Now, there was a flag tossed, and that brings the ball up now to the 34-yard line. This crowd in stunned silence as Georgia Tech has scored 23 on answer to take a 35-28 lead under eight minutes to play third quarter. Stafford throws, Massacre touch, and is hit hard out of bounds at the 44-yard line. Kyle Jackson put the helmet on Massacre already with three touchdown catches all in the first half. Uh, he did an outstanding job going back to the senior again. George has run that play about four times now, and Kenneth Harris lines in the slot, comes out, blocks the defender and a nice gain and another first down is Georgia offensively now has to have a drive to answer that tech offense Stafford steps back and shotgun four wide receivers first and ten at the 44 yard line Moreno spins out of the tackle cuts it all right Tim we'll keep an eye as you are on that Virginia Virginia Tech game and again if Virginia beats Tech Virginia Tech Georgia Tech will play in the ACC title game December 6th Moreno in Tampa and Marino is shut down. Jefferson made the stop after a pickup of three. He'll be third down at midfield. You know, Greg, this Georgia Tech defensive line, this front four has done a nice job of keeping 24 in their sights. And, you know, it's interesting this week talking to a couple of Daryl Richard defensive tackle. He said, you know, we get some of the guys from the past who call us and say they're jealous. They're jealous of the chance that we have to pay play for Paul Johnson. Eight big wins so far, that front four. For Tech doing an outstanding job. And well, Moreno has been held at 62 yards on 16 carries. Stafford out of the pocket, directing traffic, and dumps it away. Right on the sideline. Took a couple of Georgia teammates out with him. Michael Johnson bringing some pressure. They're going to say that ball was not an incomplete pass, Trev. Actually, Stafford stepped out of bounds. Rolling to his right under pressure from Michael Johnson that time. And Stafford waited a little too long before he threw it, so a huge loss for that Bulldog offense. They've done nothing here in the third quarter. Mims set to punt, and Andrew Smith ready to return for Georgia Tech. They bring pressure on the edges. Good punt. And a fair catch. At the 12 yard line. Well, now it's time to present the Red Lobster today's scholar athlete. And it's uh, Daryl Richard, big number 95 out of Georgia Tech, graduated in three years with honors, Trev, in management, member of the search committee for the new Georgia Tech president, and a 2007 second team academic All American. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future is shown today by donating $1,000 to Georgia Tech's General Scholarship Fund. We had a great chat with that young man on the phone. And he said, if this was Paul Johnson's first job, I probably wouldn't be here. Those 6 a.m. workouts were no fun. On the pitch, 
and Georgia rides Jones out of bounds. Rashad Jones takes Roddy Jones. Jonathan Dwyer, Craig, has really had a terrific third quarter. We talked about it at halftime. The need to get the ACC's leading rusher involved, and there you see the strength and the speed as he pulls away on a huge play. And then Josh Nesbitt with a great green inside handoff. Good cutback across the grain. And Georgia Tech has found a way to get their B back. Jonathan Dwyer back involved. 14 carries now, over 130 yards. And over nine yards of carry, padded by that 60-yard touchdown in the third quarter. And whistle stop play. Timeout, Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech. Their first charge timeout of the half. Calls a 30 timeout. 30-second timeout. With 4.59 to play in the third. We'll be back on CBS. 35-28, Georgia Tech. 18th rank over 13th rank, Georgia. And Georgia Tech has made their move, Trev, here in the second half. Now look at that one long, drawn-out drive of 10 plays. But in the first half, it was the big plays for Georgia's offense in the passing game here in the third quarter. Big plays in the option game from this Tech offense. Nesbitt under center on second down and six. Handoff. Flyer trying to cut back and is dropped. No gain on the play. And the clock runs under five minutes to play here in the third you know you made an interesting point during the break you remember that georgia tech their offense is built to run clock if you take away Trev, on average your opponent at least two possessions of all game absolutely so georgia's offense right here right now third down they have to get a stop get off the field to give the football back to their offense georgia tech 0 for 6 this afternoon on third down conversions they need four to keep this drive going. Nesbitt, oh, the quick hit on the edge. Roddy Jones, let the run to rumble, 50, 45, 40. Cuts it to the center of the field and then down at the 20-yard line. Where Marcus Brown saved the touchdown. Craig, what a great read by Josh Nesbitt again as he gets down the line of scrimmage. Nobody out on the perimeter as Ronnie Jones has green pasture ahead. Good effort by Georgia's defense to get back to make the play. But Ramarcus Brown saves a touchdown as somebody messed up their responsibility. And Ronnie Jones has Georgia Tech back in business inside the 20-yard line. Weaving his way for 62 yards. Ramarcus Brown with the speed to chase him down. First and 10. Dwyer stacked up and dropped. He made a great point. And we've talked about it all day. Discipline, discipline. If you let up on one play, one play. as just as you just witnessed, you lose 62 yards. Well, that time, Randy Kern and Rashad Jones, the safety and the outside linebacker, both went to the quarterback. Somebody obviously responsible that time for Roddy Jones, a breakdown in the secondary at Georgia. Rolling up on three minutes to play, third quarter. Second down, nine after the pickup of one. Nesbitt, options, slips and falls, and he'll lose three back to the 22-yard line. Ellerby made the tackle, and the clock runs under three minutes. Had a good decision by Josh Nesbitt that time. Of course, it's a loss, but at this point now, you're sitting here with a nice... A little comfortable lead, you got a nice drive going. You can't do anything foolish. Don't force the ball into coverage and have a turnover. Still in field goal range here now for Georgia Tech. And Trav talking to Nesbitt this week, he said the biggest adjustment he's had to make, and he's still learning, is the footwork. He lost his footing on that play, but running that triple option, oh, you've got to be nimble on your toes. It's all about the mesh with that bead back, and if your footwork is off, it messes up the entire play. Nesbitt throws back. It's caught, far side, tackle eligible play, Austin Barrett. Can you believe that? More trickery from Paul Johnson. What a great call from Paul Johnson that time. As Georgia Tech's offense shows action to the left. Watch Josh Nesbitt now, shows that action to the left. Option left, no stops, comes back to the right. And there he is, right out there. Here's pick number 73, Austin Barrett. 
He's a former tight end, 254 pounds. Nice catch. And here we go again, fourth down for the Yellow Jackets. One for three today on fourth down tries. They'll need two to keep this drive alive. Nesbitt again under center. They load up the backfield. And that timeout, Nesbitt took a look at that Georgia defense and said, let's talk it over with Paul Johnson. So Tech burns their second timeout of the second half. Well, Trev, you look at the Yellow Jackets, the sting. They found their sting here in the second half. Dwyer with 135 yards, and Roddy Jones has ripped out 153 against the Bulldogs. You know, and, and I really thought that getting Roddy Jones the ball out on the perimeter obviously opens everything up for Tech between the tackles for Jonathan Dwyer. So it all starts, though, with the decision-making ability of Josh Nesbitt. Here in the third quarter, he's done a terrific job of reading that option and distributing the ball to the right guys. And so far, of course, Jones and DeWire with huge third quarters. Well, after the uh, the timeout, Scott Blair is going to try a field goal. Now, 0 for 6 this season, Trev, from 40 yards and beyond. They will mark this ball down to the 18. This will be a 28-yard attempt. Scott Blair, high snap, hold, and the kick is away. And good from 28. So Blair makes it a 10-point game. Seven plays, 76 yards, and Blair kicks a 28-yard field goal. Does that make it a 10-point tech advantage? And another four minutes and 19 seconds rolled off that clock break. And the key play, don't forget Roddy Jones. Weaving his way for 62 yards on a third and fourth ball. Samuel. That ball is fumbled, and he'll let it run out of bounds. So a touchback and a flag. There is a flag, maybe a little extracurricular activity. What do you expect between the hedges at the 35-yard line? So the huddle continues. Tom Zamorski with 111 to play here in the third. Holding. And now Paul Johnson will get an explanation as the officials make their way to the sideline. So from our booth, we saw it as a late flag. And that play was uh, was gone, and then it, fall, it fell out at the 30-yard line. During the kick, Holy against the receiving team. Penalties declined. Results of the play is a touchback. First down. Well, Paul Johnson has done a terrific job here in his first year at Georgia Tech with a record of eight and three and you have to look at other jobs around uh, Division one Ole Miss I got to just look at what he did at Arkansas now at Ole Miss Houston not eight and four uh, how about Nebraska your old stopping ground the eight and four a big win over Colorado 57 yard field goal in that game you right Houston not big win of course and the only team to beat Florida this year can Georgia find momentum they can find it with Massaqua. A hot slant, 32-yard line, first and 10. And now it's going to test Matthew Stafford. He rallied back, remember, after the interception in the first half for a touchdown and showed a lot of poise, and he'll need poise here as we are ready to close out the third, heading to the fourth quarter. Right, he's your veteran leader. He's a junior. He's been in a lot of battles. Started as a freshman for the Bulldogs, and so, of course, goes back to that senior, Massaqua. They've done a good job of getting inside the corners on the slant rounds all afternoon. First and 10 from the 32. Shot down, another quick hitter. Near sideline, stop and go as Massacre has become the favorite target of the day for Matthew Stafford. It's a pickup of 13, and they're going to move the chain. So Georgia's got something going here. 
late in the third quarter. Georgia Tech came on a zone blitz that time. Michael Johnson, the left defensive end, actually dropped out into coverage. It was a good read by Stafford of getting rid of the football quickly and getting it out to his wide receiver. Clock running, 27 seconds and counting. Georgia Tech has owned his third quarter and now with a 10-point lead. Little option. Stafford put that ball in the belly of Moreno, kept it, and ran it up to about the 47. Now a flag down at the 40. Holding 60 offense. 10 yard penalty for previous spot. Repeat first down. Well, Craig, no Sean Marino that time hobbled off the field with an apparent injury. Well, he got off in a hurry. And now Caleb King, number four, a redshirt freshman from Norcross, Georgia, replaces Marino. And now the third quarter clock runs out. And what a quarter for Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets 38, the Bulldogs 28. We'll return to Athens after this message and a word from your local station. You're watching the Home Depot SEC on CBS. And back in Athens between the hedges, Georgia Tech, 26 unanswered points in that third quarter to take the lead on Georgia. Craig Bowler, Jack Trev Alberts, welcome back on CBS. You look at the numbers in that third quarter, Tech rushed for 201 yards, scored 26 points. You know, Paul Johnson, just a resilient crew. This is a team that's built on toughness, so 6 a.m. workouts. They practice in full pads three days a week. The quarterback takes shots, no matter who you are, a resilient crew and that third quarter just dominated 200 yards rushing Georgia Tech Craig has not lost this year but they've been leading after the third quarter so we start the fourth quarter Georgia with the ball down by 10 Matthew Stafford pedals back throws up top and incomplete out of bounds all right thanks to me a lot of Scoreboard watching with a Virginia win. Georgia Tech claims the ACC Coastal Division. That one's coming down to the wire here. Tech up 10. Stafford from the shotgun swings it out. Marino is back in after being shaken up. 40 makes a stop and go move to the 46 yard line. All right, Craig, that time Georgia Tech decides just to rush three. A nice call by Mike Bobo that time as they invite Georgia Tech up the field. Those three rushers, you dump it off to Marino. We talked about finding a way to get 24 involved in the game. Little screen to the outside. Big 71, 40 Glenn, the freshman. Good block right there and a good game for this offense. And you talk about the offensive line. It's been beat up time and time again all season long. Stafford, though, has found trust with his front five. And as you mentioned, Glenn and Ben Jones, two freshmen doing a great job for him. Stop it. Up over the top. And nearly intercepted and then caught. Boy, Georgia fans held their breath for a moment. Harris was the intended receiver. That brings up fourth and eight. It's another zone blitz from Georgia Tech. Kyle Jackson gets just a little bit of a hand on Stafford. Number 59, both linebackers come. Picked up pretty nice that time by Brandon Sutherland. He picked up Brad Jefferson, but Jackson with just enough pressure forces Stafford to throw high. Mims will punt an average of 46 yards on the day as long as the 52. And Andrew Smith is back inside his 15-yard line. In the rain, good high hanger. Tech will let this one pass into the end zone. It'll be a touchdown. A 54-yard kick and no return. 38-28, Georgia Tech. Good job, Parker. That's a lot of scoring to get through. 26 unanswered points from Georgia Tech and Paul Johnson. Look at those numbers. Ridiculous this third quarter in the second half for Georgia Tech. Josh Nesbitt under center. Hands it straight away. And Dwyer is taken down. Cade Weston. He's been on the field quite a bit today. Putting the helmet on Dwyer most of the time. 
You know, the defense, let's talk about Georgia's defense. They've been under some scrutiny, and the coordinator is really Martinez, but they've averaged just, they give up about 308 yards a game, 23 points a game. But the criticism came giving up 41 to Bama, 49 to Florida. And you're talking two of the top two teams in the nation. Yeah, and the last down the stretch, they gave up a lot of rushing to Kentucky. But I'll say this about Georgia's defense. When their backs have been against the wall, when they had to make a play, they have made those plays. And so I think you can sort of correlate that right, right now with this right here. You're down 10. Your defensive player at Georgia, your backs are against the wall. It's now third down. It's time for this defense to step up and give the ball back to their offense. Under 13 minutes left to play here in the fourth quarter. Third down and six. Tech one of eight on third down conversions in this game. Nesbitt tucks it, tucks it, and short of the first down at the 26-yard line. Akeem Dent, the strong side linebacker with the tackle. That brings up fourth down. Well, Akeem Dent made the play, but the play was actually really made by Cade Weston. You've been calling his name a lot. Big number 91 got in the backfield and sort of forced Josh Nesbitt off his course. And that allowed Akeem Dent to step up and make the play. Well, Trev, Georgia should have good field position. I mean, maybe uh, a return of, of 7 to 10 yards. You're, you're at midfield. Blair is back to punt. And Gray standing at the 43-yard line. High snap. Line drive. And Gray takes it on the run. Finds a scene 50-45 to the 42-yard line. And yes, Georgia will have terrific field position to start this drive. A 32-yard line drive punt and a 17-yard return. Timeout in Athens. Welcome back to Athens and Tech up by 10. You know, there's been some surprises, Craig, in college football. Alabama, of course, the number one ranked team, Texas Tech, better than people thought. How about Utah out of the Mountain West? They'll be in a BCS game. Buffalo under Turner Gill. Buffalo won the MAC East, but no bigger surprise this year than that man right there, Paul Johnson. A lot of people, Sports Illustrated, had this team at three and nine. Nobody thought much of Georgia Tech. But eight and three going into this game. An outstanding year for Paul Johnson down in the flats. Stafford sets up and throws. Oh, he squeezed that ball in traffic. Massacraw, the catch. Back to New York. And here's Tim. He's still running. Now, Bud Foster, Craig, one of the best defensive coordinators in all of college football. And you know, Virginia Tech did beat this Georgia Tech team. Georgia uses a timeout, their first of the second half. With 11.02 to play in this fourth quarter and down by 10. Well, following the game, Tim Brando, Spencer Tillman will be with TIAA Craft College Football today. That is if time permits. This game, 11 minutes to play. And the Iron Bowl to follow. Stafford's numbers, 326 yards, four touchdowns. Campus is the fullback for the Bulldogs on second down play action. Stafford steps up, throws, and a sliding catch. What a game by Massaquan. Can you play any better? On senior day, look at Massaquan up top, working inside on the freshman Rashad Reed. What a great route. Did you see his head, Craig? Fakes to the outside, comes back to the inside. And now the officials are going to wave it incomplete. Catch. They are waving this ball, this catch incomplete. A very calm Mark Rick. So back to work on third and short. And from our angle, we're sitting right on the line, Trev. That looks to be a little bit short. So that looks to be a fourth down and less than a football for a first down. They will bring the chains. Let's go back and look at Massaquah's sliding catch, or was it? 
The officials say no. And that's the right call on the field that time. What a great job by the officials. That's a tough call to make. Bang, bang, play. They see it. It hits the ground. That was an incomplete pass from Stafford to Massaquo. Short by a football. Fourth down, Georgia. No question, you're going oh, for you're it. Going for it. it seemed to me like Stafford that last time when the quarterback sneaked that time sort of hesitated. Looking for that little opening. He's 240 pounds. But again, the strength of Tech's team is their front four. And that starting front, they've combined for 19 and a half sacks, and they love to put pressure on the opponent quarterback. Georgia today 0 for 1 on fourth down. And from the eye, Stafford goes under center. Marino, watch out, 20, turns the corner, 10, 5. What a tr tremendous effort by Sean Marino. Craig, we said somebody had to step up here. Sean Marino's not a senior, but of course they're playing for these seniors here in Athens. And what a great run from Sean Marino. He got a terrific block up front from Sean Chappas at the line of scrimmage. Marino read it, got to the outside, and a great run from 24. Extra point is true. Blair Walsh trims the lead to three. No shot. Marino, the leading rusher in the SEC, finds the edge and takes it 32 yards. Georgia, their heart trap is beaten once again. And they're beaten because of the energy that 24 brings. 32 yards. Georgia Tech by three. Eighteenth ranked Georgia Tech leading thirteenth ranked Georgia. 38-35. No Sean Moreno rumbling 32 yards to cut the lead to three. And this crowd is once again very much alive with 10 minutes and change left to play in the fourth. Third quarter was all tech. 26 unanswered. So Walsh is set to kick. Angles it to the near side. Roddy Jones at the seven. Jones at the 20, makes a cut 25, and is tripped up at the 29-yard line. Craig, let's go back to that touchdown, and it's going to be a great block from the fullback. Keep your eye right there. That's the linebacker, Brad Jefferson. Watch 49, Sean Chappas, as they come around. The block right there. Terrific block at the point of attack from Chappas. Marino reads it, gets to the outside. And a great job breaking the tackle of Mario Butler into the end zone for Georgia. I'll tell you what's more impressive is the way that Marino tight roped it down the sideline. 32 yards. Tech up three with the football. And they start this drive at the 30-yard line. Nesbitt on the option. Keeps it and picks up five. And that's the beauty of the option. Didn't look like much, but you know what? It's tough to gain five. And a player down. Well, that might be Josh Nesbitt. And, of course, that would be terrible for Georgia Tech. And here it is. You get the offside guard pulling around. Nesbitt takes a couple shots right there. Well, Jarius Wynn dealt the second hit. You see Nesbitt here as he's going down the line of scrimmage following A.J. Smith. Cuts it back upfield. Donnell Ellerby's there. Kind of takes that double shot. Ellerby and then Jarius Wynn. Ooh, right on the right shoulder. Nesbitt is sitting up. Now there's the numbers on Nesbitt today. 53 total yards, 19 through the air, 34 on the ground. You know what, Craig? It's not all about the numbers, though, for an option quarterback. It's about getting the team in the right play, running at the right side, understanding who should get the football, making the right reads, and for the most part, Nesbitt's done a good job of that. 
And a new quarterback. That's Shaw, the freshman. And what a position to be put in. Up three with the football between the hedges in Athens. Well, he started a game. He started against Duke. Actually had 230 yards passing in that game when Georgia Tech beat Duke 27 to nothing. So Jabo Shaw has been in situations nothing quite like this here in Athens. Oh, this crowd is rowdy. Second down and five. Jabo Shaw in the center with a three-point lead from the 35-yard line. Shaw keeps it and picks up two. Third down and three. Weston was there. Number 91 along with Dobbs. Well, there's the numbers on Shaw. And the clock, nine and a half minutes to play. Nine and a half minutes, but here they are again. Here's Georgia Tech in a crucial third down situation. The fans are worked up into a frenzy. Can J. Bo Shaw, the freshman, deliver here on third down for Tech? If you get a first down, that's going to give you another four minutes of clock time. Shaw under center. Dwyer on the pitch. This time, though, it's Roddy Jones. First down, and the clock runs. First down, Tech at the 44-yard line. And see, that's just a good call from Paul Johnson. Understanding you have a freshman quarterback, take the reads out of his control, get a good block on the outside from Lucas Cox. And Ronnie Jones, again, quick pitch to the outside. Number 20 shows his speed. Pretty good blocking out on the perimeter. Good cutback and a first down as we get under nine minutes now. And through the arms of John Knox, number 44. Jones, 12 carries, 160 yards. Oh, Shaw pulled down. <laughs> Looks like he may pick up a yard or two, but Cade Weston said, you're not going anywhere. Big Cade Weston, 6'5", 325-pound junior, just jumps on the back of young J. Bo Shaw. He's only 190 pounds, one arm. One armed him. Yeah, Cade Weston with the strength to reach back. So Shaw returns to the sideline, and Nesbitt, after regaining his senses a bit, returns. Dwyer, maybe a yard. All right, thanks, Timmy. Clock up on seven and a half to go. You're right. Barn burner in Athens, 38-35. Nesbitt, the pitch, near side. Forks a tackle, Jones, down the sideline. 20, 10, 5, touchdown, 10. Georgia defenders are sort of standing there looking at each other like, what just happened? And what just happened was a terrific read once again from Josh Nesbitt at quarterback as he runs the option to perfection. And Roddy Jones gets to the perimeter. They take care of the fullback and a missed tackle again. John Knox, the strong safety, number 44, can't bring down Roddy Jones. And Paul Johnson in this offense, another touchdown here in the second half. Scott Blair will try the extra point. Jones with 13 carries, 214 yards against this Georgia defense. You have to wrap up when you play the option. Jones scores. It's a 10-point game. Roddy Jones, a 54-yard breakaway. Touchdown, six plays, 70 yards, three minutes off the clock. And the lead is back to 10, 45-35 in an old-fashioned shootout between the Hedges and Athens, Georgia. And Craig, how about Georgia Tech? 49 carries in this game, 400 yards rushing. Roddy Jones, 214, two touchdowns. I guess the triple option can work, huh? Short kick at the 16-yard line. Now, Trev, one thing to keep in mind of. Timeouts. Georgia with two. Georgia Tech one. Tech, remember, had to burn a couple of early timeouts in the first half. Second half, I should say. As Stafford now goes back to work. 
Lays it out and he hands the Marino. So dangerous. 40. Spins out of a tackle. 45. And the midfield is no Sean Marino. And the Bulldogs still have fight. Marino banged up a little bit here, but you know, Matthew Stafford, Mike Bobo knows uh, that Tech can just sort of pin its ears back. They're going to have to throw, so you call the screen again. And you saw the ability of Marino again. They're in the open field. The spin move on Morgan Burnett. Here's another first down to Matthew Stafford. Caleb King checks in on a screen, far side. The catch is made. And A.J. Green stops the clock at the 39-yard line, but a flag is back. Back in that Georgia backfield. Holding is a call, so he'll wipe that gain away. Holding, 78 of the offense. 10 yards to the previous spot. Pete first down. Josh Davis, the right tackle. It's such a difficult matchup out there. Derek Morgan, who has really had a remarkable season. He's only a sophomore, but as Paul Johnson told us, you know, this physical, tough style, he said, it probably benefited a guy like Derek Morgan the best. I mean, he's made the most progress as a defensive player, having to wear full pads three days a week, 6 a.m. workouts. They really think he's developed into a premier pass rusher. Stafford goes back to work. Runs out of the pocket. That ball is up for grabs. Incomplete. Incomplete. Oh, Stafford dodges trouble on that throw. Well, he dodged a lot of trouble here as guess who's back out in a bit of coverage as number 51, Brad Jefferson, does a good job. That's six foot seven. That's your power forward, Michael Johnson, as he goes up, tries to bring down his second interception in the last two games. Good job by Jefferson of getting his hands up. 6-12 to play. Second down, 20 for Georgia, down 10. Stafford, two wide receivers, top of the screen. Stafford steps up in the pocket, gives pressure. Nowhere to go. And takes a seat at the 40-yard line. Richard again there, one of the captains for Georgia Tech. And I know Tech fans know this all too well. Seven straight losses to Georgia. Seven straight losses. And so Paul Johnson's kind of been playing it up this week. Yeah, I don't know if they're good enough. I, I don't know if we can really hang on the same field. Well, I think they've shown an awful lot of resiliency here. Another example, that last play, zone blitz. Rashad Reed came off the edge, forced Stafford up in the pocket, and Richard was there. Stafford sets up, throws a dart over the middle, caught on the run, Massacre reaches out, first down, Georgia, 47-yard line, big, big play, Stafford to Massacre. That's just Massacre as a senior, trying to make a play, great throw, great catch, and breaks the tackle of Cooper Taylor. Well, Mohamed Massacre has had himself an afternoon here today in Athens. Georgia on the move, down by 10. As the clock rolls up on five minutes to play. Stafford checks off, goes up top, man, coverage! Incomplete. A.J. Green, the intended receiver. Massaqua, how about this day? For a senior, it's a dream come true. 11 uh, receptions, 180 yards, three touchdowns, but yet his team down 10. Uh, he's shown some great senior leadership, but you got to give credit to Dave Womack, the defensive coordinator at Tech. You know, they've taken some chances. They've done some zone blitz. That time, you called it right, Craig. Man coverage, and Mario Butler was up to the task. Great coverage on A.J. Green. Second down, great substitution. Massaqua comes back on the field as the play clock is nearly dry. It was down to two. Timeout. And Georgia, Georgia. uses a timeout. A that time brings their total down to one with 5.07 to play. Unfortunate that time. Miscommunication cost Georgia a timeout. Well, the ground game, the key for Tech in the second half. That really was. Paul Johnson got that ground game going, and they got to the perimeter. Jonathan Dwyer breaking some tackles out of the perimeter. Really sparked that Tech offense. And then again, how about Roddy Jones? Over 200 yards rushing, and then back inside to Jonathan Dwyer between the tackles. 
But again, it was the key. The right reads from Josh Nesbitt all day. Breaking tackles. And Roddy Jones, Jonathan Dwyer, and Josh Nesbitt have been huge all afternoon for that Tech offense. 277 yards on the ground this half for Tech. And 33 for the Georgia Bulldogs. You know, when you look back at those highlights, what you see is the inside-outside game of Georgia Tech. And, and that's what Paul Johnson is just so good at. Anything you do, he's got an answer for whatever you try to do defensively. If you shut down the perimeter game, he has that fullback, that B back. But I got to tell you, a lot of it's been Georgia Tech's A backs making plays and breaking tackles. Tech showing blitz, Stafford, shotgun, sets up the screen, in the flat, all a one handed catch. Marino at the 25 20. Marino 15 stacked up and dropped at the 13. Another first down for Georgia. Well, Mike Bobo is figuring out this blitz of Georgia Tech as Dave Walmet comes with another blitz, and it's the same screen. Look at the athleticism, the ability by Marino to take it in with one hand, forces Tony Clark to miss the tackle. And Georgia in business inside the 15-yard line. And Caleb King, number four, checking back in on first and ten. Low snap, King gets the handoff, puts it near side, stands, drops, could not get out of bounds, and now the worst enemy for Georgia, Trev, is the clock. It's at four and a half. One timeout remaining for both the Bulldogs and the Yellow Jackets. The good thing about this offense, of course, they've had five touchdown drives of one minute or left on the season, so it's a quick strike offense. Two wide receivers at the top. Stafford checks off out of the pocket. Swing shots it to the end zone, incomplete. Caleb King was parked in the back edge of the end zone. And Stafford, again, he's got a quick release threat. I mean, that was a slingshot throw. And, and he's got a special arm as Noshawn Marino comes back into the game for Caleb King. And, of course, the decision that Stafford will have to make after this game is, does he declare for the NFL draft? He's got a special arm few college quarterbacks possess. 168 total yards for Noshawn Marino. And Marino may have a question or two to answer about his future. Clock at 409 in the fourth quarter. Shotgun. Stafford throws a dart over the middle. Touchdown, Georgia. A.J. Green. And the Bulldogs fight back. Well, there you have it. Tech is going to live and die by the blitz. Once again, they come with a blitz. They bring the linebackers in the middle of the field. And Stafford shows some poise, stands right in there. There's the blitz, 59-51, Jackson and Jefferson. And how about A.J. Green? He just makes it look so easy. Extra point is good. A classic between Tech and Georgia. Between the hedges, 45-42. After this on CBS. A.J. Green. 45-42. Georgia Tech. Nine plays. 72 yards. And a three-minute drive. And Green capped it off from 12 yards down. The key play was Massaquah's reception on third down and 20. Trev, remember that. Georgia looked to be in big trouble, but Stafford held through. Stafford did an outstanding job. The offensive line providing just enough protection for Stafford to find his open receiver. A couple screen plays, Marino was huge, and a couple screen plays as well. Well, the clock will play a factor. The timeout, one remains for both the Bulldogs and the Yellow Jackets. 4.04 to go. Tech will get the ball up by three. special teams but look at the day that these two have had Jonathan Dwyer 18 carries 13 carries from Jones and of course Craig most of this has happened in the second half 
Mel Dwyer, you know, we asked the question, what will Paul Johnson do to start the third? Well, the, the answer was clear. Dwyer for 60 yards, and that really got Tech right back in this game. They have the ball and a three-point lead, under four to go. Nesbitt, the quarterback, hands it off straight up the gut. They're going to challenge now Georgia in the middle with Jonathan Dwyer. Let's see who's tougher, Dwyer or that front four. Absolutely, Craig. Now you're getting deep into the fourth quarter. It's been a long afternoon for this Bulldog front four. It's consistent pounding, cut blocking. And those one and two yard gains the first couple quarters can turn into five and six. It's a nice run on first down from Jonathan Dwyer. A gain of six, second down four. And now Tech is using the clock. In fact, Nesbitt may just sit under center and let it run. The play clock's to 12. That's exactly what he's going to do. Veteran play from Nesbitt. Under center, play clock to four. Down to three, the snap taken with two. And Dwyer is dropped after a pickup of one and Rennie Curran in on the tackle. Well, I tell you, Brandon Wood, number 97, is getting awfully close to making the tackle before he's even able to hand off to the fullback. Great penetration from Brandon Wood in the backfield instantaneously. And here's your all-important third down, Frank. Third down and three, clock at 2.37. And Trev, you have to think, you score another first down, Georgia's in trouble. One timeout left. Remember, they had to waste that timeout. Miscommunication with their wide receivers. Play clock to five. Nesbitt will take the snap with two. He'll keep it. Oh, he's tripped up. And he got a spot at the 45. First down tech. And Trav, it's time now for the direct TV player of the game. And Roddy Jones, 13 carries, 214 yards, and two touchdowns. You know, he's a difference maker. Certainly Jonathan Dwyer in a nice ball game, but Roddy Jones on the perimeter, really stretching that Georgia defense. Big play after big play, and of course, setting up this drive with a kickoff return, putting Georgia Tech in great field position as well. Under two minutes to play. And a first and ten. Nesbitt takes the snap. There's movement. I don't see a flag. And Nesbitt is tackled back at the line of scrimmage. And now Georgia will burn their final timeout with 1.36 to play. Time now for the five-star play of the game presented by Wrangler and Trev so many plays in this game today, but it's it's Roddy Jones. Once again, Roddy Jones takes that pitch out onto the perimeter, and it's the ability to break the tackle right there. John Knox, Rashad Jones, and into the end zone is Roddy Jones, over 200 yards rushing. A remarkable day from Roddy Jones. Well, a lot of Georgia fans beginning to make their way to the exits. And Trev, it looks as though this seven-game losing streak by Tech to Georgia will end the day between the hedges on the road. Again, I can't emphasize enough the expectations. There were some people in Atlanta that weren't exactly thrilled with a Paul Johnson hire. You know, what was this triple option nonsense? Is this really going to work? Nobody but Paul Johnson expected to have this kind of success. And remember, Craig, he told us they're really only playing with about 65 scholarships right now. Back in on some of that probation, they'll be back to 85 next year. Certainly a good move for the 16 starters, freshman or sophomore. Nesbitt, the keeper. And Georgia still laying the helmet on Tech. And of course, what else for Rennie Curran? I love the play of Rennie Curran on the, on the weak side. Uh, Rennie Curran has really been a terrific player for that Georgia defense. He's been all over the field again this afternoon, but Georgia defense backed up again. You remember a couple weeks ago against Kentucky, they allowed 226 yards rushing to a freshman Randall Cobb at quarterback running some option plays. So some concern going into this game about being fundamentally sound discipline and the ability to make open field tackles. Certainly, Georgia Tech has taken advantage of some of those this afternoon. Under a minute to play, this will 
sealed the deal for Paul Johnson. I mean, you could just hand him the ACC Coach of the Year award. Absolutely. Remarkable job by Paul Johnson. Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech will use their timeout with 48 seconds to play. Trav, let's revisit Albert's angle update. And you talked about the offense taking some shots. Well, taking some shots, five plays over 20 yards. But how about that defense wrapping up? 137 rush yards, four rushing touchdowns. Not such a great job today from that Bulldog defense in terms of wrapping up. Forty-five, forty-two. Georgia fans, the faithful, remain hoping for a miracle here on their home field. You know, I got to tell you the story. We were talking to Michael Johnson. He said at practice, there's a little kid walking around with a Georgia Bulldog shirt on. And he said, get that kid out of here. Paul Johnson walked over and said, what do you mean? If I was a kid growing up here last seven years, I'd be wearing a Georgia shirt, too. They've done whooped your rear end the last seven years. Well, Tech's last win against Georgia right here in Athens in 2000. Mark Richt has never lost to Georgia Tech in his coaching tenure. Four and six. For 48 seconds on the clock. And a third down and six. Georgia's defense makes the play they needed. Fourth down. Uh, and Nesbitt is just beat up. I mean, that one of the things about running the option is your quarterback is going to take an awful lot of shots. Trev, one second between game and play clock. I mean, this, this Georgia Tech team, you have to salute them. They were down at the half. They had a 26-point third quarter unanswered by Georgia. Just complete resiliency. Give Paul Johnson, Josh Nesbitt. Kids missed two and a half games with a hamstring injury. Both of his ankles beat up. They're going to whistle, delay a game with one second to play. And Paul Johnson and the Georgia Tech Yellow Jackets will jump to 9-3 and three on the season and a disappointing end of senior day here in Athens, Trev. So a knee for Nesbitt. On a knee, it's over. The streak ends at seven, and Tech rushes the field here in Athens. Our final score, Georgia Tech 45, Georgia 42.